Hello, good day, and welcome to Programming Language Compared. Today we're going to be looking at complex number in Python. As in Go, we'll see that our Python give us very, very good support for complex number. As a result, um, this video is going to be very short because there's nothing too exciting about um, using complex numbers in Python. I mean, the excitement can come from the fact that it's built in, but that makes it so easy that we don't really have to jump through any sort of hoops like we have to with Java and, um, you know, Scala and Groovy. So this is going to be a very short video. And like before, we're going to do some simple things, um, you know, add, multiply, and call some advanced operation. So let's get into it, jump into the code, and let's see what's going on. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is copy our example um, code to Python. So from we copy the Scala code to Python, and then I'm going to go clean up all this um, stuff that we don't need when we do a build in Scala, for example. And then I'm going to remove all the unnecessary stuff. So that's all the stuff about Gradle and project directory and class paths and settings and bin directory and all that stuff. And really the only thing we want, and it probably would have been easier, is to just have copied the main that Scala file and then rename it. But anyway, here we are. That's what we're done to. We have main that's Python now. And now we're going to go ahead and start changes, changing this to be a valid Python program. So I'm going to speed up that part of it. It's very, very simple what we have to do. So what do you have to do to Python? So we can take out all the package stuff, everything else, because Python is just a scripting language. And so we're going to be able to just write our um, statements without enclosing it into a function. We could have if we wanted to in main like we did before, but we're not going to do that. Um, complex numbers, just like I say, look exactly like they do in Go. The only thing here to catch is that Python used J. So no I, it's J. And so if you try to use I, it's going to set how it doesn't know the number. All right. The other thing is um, print line. Um, instead of doing print line, it's just print. Um, of course, we don't have to use variable. So we just say the variable name equals and assign it. We don't have to do any kind of specified type or anything or use any keyword to introduce a variable. And finally, when we go to print, instead of concatenating strings, we'll just print them out as separate entities, which separate them by comma. And once we, we do that, we're done. The final thing to note here is on line 11, which is where we say see that underscore add blah, blah, blah. So in that case, what I'm doing is I'm calling the add method. So one of the things we might, you might have noticed about Python is that there are methods on these objects, and one of them is underscore, underscore add underscore. And so I can call it this way, or I can call it like I did on, um, let's say, line 14, where I do B plus A. Same, exact same thing. And that should remind you of what's happening in Scala and Groovy, which is when you have a method defined, you can call it infix or invoke a function. And we're going to see that also in C++, um, where you can overwrite and add your own methods to classes and then call them like if they're built in method sort of in the infix um, format, which is, you know, upper end, upper end, operator, upper end. Okay. <laughs> so left side, left side, operator, right side. All right. Don't worry if you don't really understand or you don't get it. Uh, you, you'll see it plenty of times um, in the future that I, th I guarantee you're going to get the idea. All right. So that's it for, for Python. Like I said, it's really going to be short. That's it. No, nothing too exciting. It just works. Right. And that's what I really like. I like when a, a language that comes afterwards addresses certain type of problems and makes it seamless. And that's why I'm so excited about Go. They've done so many things that they've revisited and just cleaned up. And for the life of me, I really do not get why Java didn't have complex number. And even after Java, why didn't Groovy and Scala didn't have complex number? Now, yes, we were able to use implicit class in Scala and um, Groovy method class to add, you know, those operations. But why should you? But anyway, so that's it for this um, video. See you in the next video. Remember, I'm traveling next week. So um, I'll try and get some video out, but it's really busy these days. So I don't know. Um, please take a break um, if you, I don't post any videos um, next week, but the following week, I'll follow up with the videos. Um, follow me on Twitter, um, Straversity1, at Straversity1, Instagram, at Straversity. Um, check out the description for details on whatever. Um, other than that, see you in the next video. Take care. Bye. Have a great day.